Hey guys, Min here, personal trainer from Girls Fitness. Today we're gonna to go for a lower body workout. We're gonna tackle mostly our quads, our glutes, and our hip muscles. Primarily, we're gonna use a lot of tempo work. And a lot of our technique is gonna be what gets us that stimulus for hypertrophy. No weight, but just applying your own body is gonna get us there. First though, we're gonna warm up. We're gonna start by warming up our hips. Then we're gonna move down the line. Our knees are gonna get warmed up, our ankles are gonna get warmed up. Get a little bit of core activation too. First and first, I'm gonna start off on the floor. I'm gonna get in a 90-90 position. That means my front leg is 90 degrees, my back leg's gonna be 90 degrees. I'm gonna be in this position. I'm gonna think about what's tight for me. Particularly, I find my back leg is tighter than my front leg. Keep note of that just for yourself. From here, I'm gonna keep my feet flat on the floor. I'm gonna lift my shins like they're windshield wipers, and I'm gonna come across the other side, just like so. You can go one hand to help you across, all right? And I like the back hand to help you get there. If you're more advanced, you can go no hands. You can do your windshield wipers right here. The big thing you want to do is always have your chest face the same way your hips are facing. You don't want your knees going one way while your chest is facing the other way, right? You're going to get stuck because now your spine is limiting you, not your hips. So let your chest fall where your hips are facing. I say do about 20 repetitions total, 10 on each side. We're going to take our time here. Work through ranges of motion you find that's tight and stiff. You might also start moving and drifting forward a little bit. That's perfectly normal. Recenter yourself if you need to, okay? I'll be doing about five more reps and we'll be progressing from this position here. All right. Now, I'm gonna add a little bit of hip activation, a little core stability into it. I'm gonna simply just lift myself up using my glutes, using my hip muscles. I'm gonna begin by hinging up the hips forward. I'm gonna flex my foot forward. I'm just going to use my glutes to lift me up from here. I'm going to just do about eight repetitions. The big thing is try to keep a nice solid brace in your core. Squeeze the glutes at the top. And make sure you have a nice balance between both your legs. Two. And last one. I'm going to windshield wiper back the other way. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Okay, inch up the hips, toes pointing forward. And I'm gonna lift myself up, squeeze my glutes, squeeze my thighs, and my arms. Let's do about eight to ten reps. Mostly going for feel here. All right, you might have one side stiffer than the other, so if you get past the situation, work on that side a little bit more. Don't feel like you have to do a set number of reps. Okay. After I've done my get-ups, I'm gonna go up to tabletop position. That means I'm on my fours. Okay. Feet are going to be pointed, my hands on my shoulders, my knees are going to be a little bit wider so they have a good base of support. All I'm going to do is cat cow. That means I'm just going to go into spinal flexion and then an extension. Okay, I'm going to get a little bit of movement in the spine. Particularly, I want to keep it as much as possible in my upper back. Okay, our thoracic spine is typically what gets tight. That's what you see when you have some posture, a hunch back. Okay. So I'm going to try to keep most of the movement in my upper back. Notice my head also follows with my spine really. That's because our neck also attached to our spine. We get a lot of movement here. Another thing is I want to have some active serratus. Okay, I may be protracting my shoulders, pushing into the floor. I don't want to be slouched over like this. Okay, get it engaged. About 10 to 12 reps, so just whatever feels nice and warmed up. Okay, take your time with it. So, that was what reps you want to do. I'm not going to use five inches. I'm going to take one hand. I'm going to rest it with that head. I don't want to wrench it. I don't want to pull on it either. I'm just going to rest it here. And I'm going to do some rotations by grassy spine. So, that means my hips stay still. My core is braced just a little bit. And I'm going to add in these rotations here. Okay. My guide is where the center of my chest is facing. Okay. I want to imagine how the paintbrush stick out my chest and I'm drawing a line with my chest. Okay, same thing here, eight to 10 reps or whatever you feel comfortable. Notice I'm keeping my hips still, keeping all of my breath is fine. And once it's done, I'm going to do some sides. I'll stand in the back of my head, do a solid base. 
it still so I did it like four. Now we just draw a little. Make sure 
Your knees are over your foot. You don't want it caving in. You're gonna put some unnecessary stress on your knees. Open the knees up, get the knees activated. Core is braced. Okay, I also want to go as low as possible. As I control my back, like stay straight. If I go too low, my butt's gonna tilt under me as opposed to your tilt. So find a good position where you're still stable. And you have sufficient mobility. So into the hips. Sit the butt down, lift the chest. Okay, we're gonna do about eight reps of these. Hinge up the hips, drop down, and back up. The last progression today for this warm up. Hinge up the hips, squat down. I'm gonna lift up one arm at a time. I do those reps just like that. Hinge up the hips, squat down, left hand, right hand, and up. Hinge up the hips, squat down. Left, right, and straight back down. Okay? So that's gonna be our warm-up. At this point, get a little bit of water. We're going to go into our workout now. We're gonna be starting off with some knee dominant exercises. We're gonna do some intensity techniques also. So it's gonna be a shorter workout, but you're definitely gonna get the work out of it. The first thing we're gonna to do today will be a reverse lunge on both legs. And after we're done both sides, we'll be progressing just to a bodyweight squat. So for our reverse lunge, I'm going to pick a leg. I like doing my non-dominant leg first, so that'll be my left leg. I'm going to get all my weight on my lead leg. I'm going to get my foot activated too by pushing my big toe to the floor. Okay. From here, I'm going to take a nice deep breath, brace my core a little bit. I'm going to put all my weight here onto this leg, and this leg's just going to step back. Once that leg is back, I'm going to sit straight down, keep my knees over my toe. Okay. So if you're looking from the front, as I step back, my knee doesn't cave in, stays right over my foot. Okay? Just like that. I'm not going so low that I bang my knees off the floor. I'm just going to hover, okay, and I come right back up. We're going to do about as many reps as possible so you feel like you have two left in the tank. So nice and slow, super controlled. I like to really take my time with this. About four seconds down. I'm going to hold it for a little bit, then I'm going to pop it back up. We're going to do this on both legs, so after you do the amount of reps you feel like there's two left in the tank, match it on your non-dominant leg. So, sorry, on your dominant leg. So, we're going to go to our dominant leg now, step that leg back, same thing, my foot stays controlled, my big toes in the floor, my knees stay over my foot, very good balance. Core is braced. I'm about slamming my knee back leg into the floor on this upper leg. Okay? I'm going to get my reps here. Once you finish both sides, we're just going to go right into a squat. This is kind of a mechanical drop set. So just a very simple bodyweight squat. My hands are front me. I'm pushing down my hands. Big braces my core. I'm gonna sit my hips down, open up my knees, and let it come forward also as I come down, just like this. This is also based off how your fatigue is. Your legs are already worked, you're quite exhausted, but we're getting just a little bit out of it as two legs are stronger than one. Same thing, we're gonna go to the two reps left in the tank. After your squats, go for a little water break. It will take about two to three minute break. Come back and we're gonna go right into the reverse launch, back into the squat. So take your break now and we'll come back to it. Okay. So we're coming back to our set. We're gonna go about two to three sets here. It's gonna completely depend on your, your uh, fitness level. If you're more advanced, you can do three to four sets. If you're still relatively new, two sets is more than enough, especially because there's a drum set right now. So we're gonna go back to our set, three foot in front, Good control of my front foot. I'm gonna step back, make sure my knee stays on my foot. And I'm gonna go to have about two reps left in the tank. Nice and controlled, very slow. All the way down, full range of motion. Okay. It doesn't matter if you get two reps, 50. The big thing is getting that control, pushing close to failure. where I feel like there's two reps left in the tank. I'm gonna match on the other side of 
that's about seven, eight reps. Same thing here. And the reason you want to use your non-dominant leg first is typically your smaller or weaker muscle. So that way you can prevent imbalances. If you did your dominant leg first, it is possible, but matching with your non-dominant leg is much harder. Mitigation in your arch. 
From here, I'm gonna push through my heel onto my left leg, and I'm gonna teeter-totter on the top of my back. So it's gonna look like this. Okay? Okay. Different ways you can do it. You have your foot goes flat. All right? The big thing though is having a really solid setup, really good core control. Make sure your knee hip position is also solid. All right? You also want to consider where you're feeling it. If you're feeling it either in your lower back or your knees, that means there's something wrong there. You should be mostly feeling this in your glute. We're going to be doing about six to eight reps. Okay, on my mom down the leg. Or we got two reps left at 10. Also, our glutes did just get worked with the squat, so if you find this really challenging, that's perfectly fine. I'm going to switch to the other side. Okay, foot flat, foot up. Doesn't matter too much. Just make sure the setup is solid. Okay, notice that I have a crazy arch in my back. Keeping it all in the glutes. And when I get about two reps off the tank, I will be taking a break, one to two minutes, then I'll be coming back. If you're not strong enough to do a single leg bridge, you can just do both feet on the floor. The same principles apply. You just have a much wider foot position because you have a wider base of support. But knees still stay out, core still engaged, and you won't be switching sides, obviously. So find that rep range where you got about two left and 10. It could be five reps, it could be 20. Make sure it's also controlled and you're also feeling in your glutes. You feel your knees, you feel your lower back. That means you gotta watch your form and adjust it, okay? And also try to squeeze your glutes with every rep as much as you can and keep that squeeze. So what I always like to cue with my clients is it's hard to feel your glutes at the bottom, but at the top when your glutes are most contracted, it's easier to feel. Lifting my glutes, squeeze your glutes, then hold that squeeze and come down. Pop right back up, okay? Just like this, okay? If I lose that squeeze, that's okay. I'm at the top, I squeeze, hold that squeeze as you come down. Pop right back up, squeeze the glutes, come down, pop right back up. Two reps on the tank, switch to the other side. Brace the core. Lift the hips, squeeze my glute. This is gonna be on my right side. Then pop up. Very controlled, and pop up. Very controlled, and pop right back up. I'm gonna match this leg here with the amount of reps I did. And I'm gonna take another two to three minute break. On our last set, we're gonna come back, do both legs, single leg, single leg, and then we're gonna add another mechanical drop set. So this also applies for people who are doing it on two legs also. And it's all it is gonna be a hold similar to that of a squat. So, as I say, this is my first set. I'm gonna go until I got about two reps left my tank. Okay. Okay. Match with my dominant side. Okay. Now I'm going to go into a two leg bridge. All right, both my feet are on the floor, my knees are nice and wide, and all I'm going to do is just hold the top until I got about like 30 seconds left in me before I'm going to just come right back down to the lift. Okay, hips are tucked under, core is raised. I'm squeezing my glutes really hard here. I'm driving those knees out, and I'm just going to hold. Okay, you're going to feel a lot of burning here, that's perfectly normal. Okay. This is also a good way to assess if you're feeling it where you want to feel it. If it's your glutes that's burning, that's a great sign. If it's your lower back, your knees, you've got to change your form up, okay? I'm going to hold. I'm going to constantly squeeze my glutes, all right? If I just sit here and I just relax with it, I can be here for a while. But if I really focus on contracting my glutes, it's going to be a lot harder. And until I got about three seconds left in me, I'm going to come back down. And that's going to be your mechanical drop set. For your glutes. Okay, so that's going to be our full workout. Now we're going to go for a little bit of a stretching routine, nice and simple. I'm actually going to go back to the 990 position, okay? A lot of the muscles we work during the workout are going to get stretched in this position here. I'm also not just going to sit here too. What I can do is tilt, have my front leg into external rotation, 
okay? Very gently, I can tilt the back leg into internal rotation, and you feel your hip muscles get stretched, all right? You can also hinge at the hips on that lead leg. You can feel your glute get stretched here. If I hinge towards the back leg, I'll get a nice stretch in my abductors, all right? So play around with it in this position. Find what's tighter for you. For me personally, my glutes aren't as tight as my abductor, so I'm gonna lean more towards my back leg. All right, and find what works for you. Okay, say so you have really poor rotation in your hips, you can do internal rotation, pull this, you know, external rotation of the front leg if you have bad external rotation. So find what you need for yourself and stretch your back. I'm gonna hold each stretch for about 20, 30 seconds, then I'm gonna move on to the other side. So when you wipe her across, okay? What's tight here? You might have one side have a tighter muscle than the other one. So you might have a tighter right glute or you might have a tighter left adductor. So pay attention to your body. Don't just stretch willy nilly. Find what you need for yourself. Okay, so rotation with the front leg, rotation the back leg, hinge towards the glute, hinge towards the adductor, okay? Find what's tight for you. I'm gonna chill here for a little bit. Once I'm done, I'm gonna bring my feet together. Bring up to butterfly pose. I'm gonna make sure my back is straight out. Uh, one of the most common things you see is people go into stretching, they round the back. That's not your hip stretching, right? That's your lower back. So keep the, the back nice and upright. I'm gonna bring my feet together. The closer your feet are, the harder it is. And also, the closer your knees are to the floor, the harder it will be. So find that nice position, okay? Once you find a good position here, Take your hands and gently glide your knees towards the floor, okay? If they can touch, that's awesome. If they can't touch, that's perfectly fine. You just want the intensity. You want to just put a slight amount of pressure in here, okay? I'm going to for a second. Okay? You want to hold it for the duration I want. I'm going to go back onto my back, okay? We're going to just open up the hips a little bit. I'm just gonna hug my knees in towards me. I'm not just gonna pull straight, I'm just gonna pull up slightly out an angle too. And then open up my fist right here. All right, I'm gonna just hold this pose just for 20, 30 seconds. And then we'll progress into the next part. Now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take one leg, I'm gonna lace one foot on top of your thigh, okay? Notice my ankle, which is here, is not on my thigh. If I have my foot like this, and I start yanking on it, my ankles are not going to like me. So make sure it's on your shin bone. I'm going to have one hand on the outside, reach through the back of my thigh. One that's going to reach through this hole here. Okay, you can uh, lace your fingers together. And all I'm going to do is just hold this position here, gently putting pressure, bringing the leg on top towards my chest. Notice, I have my hips on the floor and my head on the floor. It's really easy to just Put yourself up here, okay? You get another nice position here, especially since we're already in a punched up position where you sit a lot, so let your back and your, your uh, hips stay nice and relaxed on the floor. Okay, gently pull, pulling it towards you. 20, 30 seconds, you're gonna switch sides. Okay, gently let go. This leg's gonna step on top, reach my hands through, pull the top legs towards you. This gonna be stretching your glute muscles, right? Especially in your hip muscles. Big thing that we just trained. Okay, take your time here. Make sure your hips are on the floor, your back's on the floor. All right. Once that's done, we're gonna tap in a little bit of spinal rotation. I'm gonna pick one side to lay on. Uh, I'm gonna face you guys, just so you guys can see. I'm gonna take my top leg, step in front of me. My top hand's gonna reach behind me. And I'm just gonna go into this pretzel pose for a little bit. I wanna make sure my hips are also kind of neutral. I don't want them really far back here, nor so far forward I don't reach back. Nice and natural position, two ways to progress. Drop the knee towards the mat, or drop the hands behind you towards the mat, all right? Hold this 20, 30 seconds. Go to the other side, all right? Top leg, step to front, back hand reaches across. Stretch. After this, you're done. Here we go. 
go get a good meal, watch some Netflix, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much for being through this workout with me. Have a great day, guys.